Hi. Just checking we're all here. Ooh. No, I'm getting some annoying thing on the screen. Go away. Welcome to live chat. Remember to guard your policy. Yep. Oh, it's faded. Wonderful. Is anyone online yet already? Let me know. We are a little bit early. Three minutes. Hi, Claire. Hello. Um, Jasmine is napping. Woohoo. Um, managed to get her down about quarter two. So fingers crossed we've got an hour. Oh, hello, Brenda from Pennsylvania. <laughs> Hi, so ever it. Hi from France. Hi from Sydney. <laughs> Hi. Hi from Tennessee. Hi Antoinette from South Africa. Woohoo! And Joy from South Africa as well. And we've also got Raha Rahayu. Rahayu, sorry if I pronounced that wrong, from Singapore. Someone from Washington State. Uh, Jamie, hello. Um, hi KJ from Kentucky. We've got Anna from Norway. Uh, Cloetha from Netherlands. Someone from Exeter, Essex. <laughs> Luxembourg, Montreal, Denmark. Oh, hi, Chantal in Hackney. Tell it hi from me. <laughs> wow, this is wonderful. Oh, hi, Hannah. We've got someone, Kathy from Belfast, someone from Cheshire. I'm trying to do this. Gina from Canada. Uh, and Jennifer from Reading. <laughs> Little less exotic. Someone says, I'm here from Liverpool. Oh, and we've got Jean from St. Albans. Uh, Beth, Beth saying good morning from Maryland, USA. I think that was Maryland, USA. Malta, Michigan, Nottingham, Milton Keynes. Okay, I'm getting really excited. I promise. Birmingham, woohoo! Um, and Ohio, wow. So you guys over in the States and uh, in the States, you guys will be the morning. So I should probably talk quietly in case we've got, you know, need quiet morningness. Or oh, someone from the Czech Republic. Ottawa, Canada, Somerset. Right. So guys, I am going to start the uh, session every time with uh, saying hi to people for a little bit, but then I'm going to try my best not to get distracted or overexcited about the countries and all the wonderful people out there joining us. So we're here to make the Audrey Top, which is our newest um, pattern, newest PDF release. So it was released last week to the general public. And those of you who are in our PDF club will know, um, uh, will have known about it a week before. If you don't know what our PDF club is, it's basically you sign up for the year um, and you find out about our PDF releases before everybody else. You also get 10% off. Um, and when you sign up, uh, you also get a free pattern of your choice. So it isn't actually gonna cost you anything. It's um, only gonna give you things. Anyway. So, we're making the orgy top. I have cut mine out. Now, hilariously, I was planning on cutting it out last night. Um, I put Jasmine to bed at uh, quarter past seven and woke up at ten o'clock <laughs> at night. So, I basically fell asleep with her. So, um, yeah, that was good. Um, so, then I was doing it this morning. Jazzy and I, unfortunately, were up at 5.30. So, we were doing it this morning. Um, and I've got it all here. Now I've kept the pattern pieces on because I thought we could just talk through what we've got. Um, before I do that, I've left one uh, pattern piece to cut the notches. So let's all make sure our notches are cut. And just to show you what we're doing with the notches, we are making sure we snip into them. I think I've got, let me just angle this guys because I think we're showing less. Is that a bit better? You can see a bit more what I'm doing on the table now. So notch, there's the triangle of the notch. And what we're gonna do is just snip up to the point of it. You don't need to cut the whole triangle out. You don't need to go beyond that point either. So let's just snip that one, that one. Yeah, so just check that you've got all your notches cut and then let's go through what pattern pieces we have got. So we have got a back piece. We have got a front piece, both of which are cut on the fold. Now are you losing my head? Oh, sorry guys, it's gonna be a few teething problems. Does it matter that we're losing the top of my head? Probably, oh no, I do keep zooming out. Right, let's just see if I can get this better. Oh, I know what, I just, <coughs> sorry guys. Oh, better, isn't it? That's better, okay. 
Um, so then we've also got neck pan pieces. Now this depends on uh, what we are. Um, oh, I found a notch that I didn't cut. This depends on which version we are making. I'm making version three, which is the version, not that I'm wearing, it's this version without any tie. The reason I'm doing that, because I absolutely do love this. This is very me, very vintage, very Audrey Hepburn, which is what we named the pattern after, which is what, which is who? Show Audrey respect, Lisa. So, um, ooh, let's just pop that another notch in there and there, right, okay. So I'm gonna make this version because I'm using a Roma Ponte. Now, any of you who are using just a cotton jersey, which is what I'm using here, then you can make this tie. I mean, you can make the tie version with uh, Roma Ponte, but it's probably gonna bounce up and not sit properly and not tie very nicely, which is why I'm not doing that one. So you might have slightly different versions of that. And then we should all have our sleeve. Right, those are all our pieces. Whilst I'm taking the pins out, guys, I'm just gonna talk you through uh, what I did mention yesterday, if in case you missed it. So when we decided to do these low, uh, live sewing uh, videos, we thought quite hard about how we were going to uh, put them up and whether we put them on the stitch school. Um, and we decided that we wanted to make them available for everybody, everybody and anybody. Um, and so what we did instead is we have put a link to our... Uh, donations page so we didn't want to set an amount that you should pay for this because we understand that some people will not be able to afford to pay for this at the moment particularly because you might be worried about your income so please do not feel you have to but those of you that cannot afford to um, offer a donation much appreciated we will be putting it in the um that's in the description box below and also so over it you'll see on the comments now are adding links as well to that um, so whatever you can afford it's a third party platform called Kofi um, but it is all run through uh, the payment gateway of PayPal so you can just make a donation at any point before um, uh, any point basically it's live all the time so if you want to make a donation now you can if you want to make a donation at the end you think I was worth it you can um, and you'll also see that so over it are there and they are there answering your questions if you've got any technical questions it's going to be quite hard for me to answer them as well as talking you all through the steps uh mum and dad have got the snazziest iron and it just is beeping at me that's not going to be annoying is it um uh, goes on standby which is obviously great but not great for this <laughs> Um, so yes, any technical questions, the Sew Over It team are there, they're watching and they will be answering those queries. I'm also going to try my best to keep the speed right, but obviously that is also quite difficult. Um, so fingers crossed though, the majority of us will all be at the right speed and also we will, um, if, you, if you're kind of feeling that it's going too fast, you can always watch it back later. YouTube are recording this, so yeah. Right. Okay, it's time to sew. Oh, let's do some pinning first though. So first thing we need to do is we need to locate the front piece. So this is the back piece. Now the way that we can tell it's the back piece, it is very slightly higher because the neckline at the back is higher, but it's also really easy to locate it from just finding the two notches. So an armhole has two notches in the back and it has one notch in the front. So I know that is my front piece. So I'm gonna put that to one side. Okay. This has got one notch, this is my front. Okie dokie. So I'm gonna put my strap or neckline pieces to one side and I'm going to take my uh, sleeve pieces. Now, I'm just seeing if there is a right side or a wrong side to this Roma Ponte. It's very, very subtle. What I'm gonna do though, just so I can see, sorry guys, you're not really seeing this, are you? A mm. bit more. I'm just gonna put a little cross on the old wrong side with some chalk, because it is going to drive me mad if I'm trying to find that. So, good old little cross there. And the same on the front. There we go. Cross on the wrong side. Right, so I'm now gonna take one of my sleeve pieces and place it right sides together with one of my front armhole pieces. So we've got the front armhole, we've got a single notch there 
and we're placing them right sides together. Just checking I am actually doing right sides. I've just done that across. <sighs> and pinning it in place. Now, I think I must have uh, been very confident this morning. Um, and I decided to do stripes because, you know, there's nothing like live sewing to lots of people and also trying to match. Anyway, make sure that you're not matching up that single notch there. And you guys, if it doesn't match up, let's hope that uh, um, you won't be able to see. No, only joking. Okay. So we've done that one. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're now ready to sew. Now, I'm using my Benina today. She's quite quiet, which hopefully will be the best... Um, uh, the best thing in this situation. Well, unfortunately, I don't seem to have any uh, ballpoint needles, but if you do have ballpoint needles, much better for sewing jersey with. Fortunately, this is Roma Ponte, so it's not too difficult um, to um, pierce through. Um, sorry, not too difficult to pierce through. It's not gonna snag um, like other jersey could. Um, so I'm just gonna hope that the needle that I've got on there that's slightly blunt will be good. We need to make sure that we're gonna be sewing this with a zigzag stitch. Um, so this best zigzag stitch, and I always need to check, I have actually got my work phone here um, just to check things because I just sort of sometimes just do things myself and it might not be exactly as we're saying. So we're recommending the stitch length of 1.5 with a width of one millimeter. So if we all go on to our zigzag and um, we're gonna put our stitch length up to 1.5 and stitch width, of one just check that this is the right way around yes okay um okie dokie so it looks like sorry guys i'm just seeing some few pings up did the description alex did it not save in the description box waiting for alex or rosie to reply i did put it in the description box which should be below but maybe youtube has naughtily not saved it if uh, the donation link hasn't gone in, guys, Alex is sending things now. Okay, L putting up links and things now. Okie dokie. Right, so we've all got it ready. I think we should do a little bit of a test because we don't want to um, realise that we've. it's not going very well. Oh, it is in the description box. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. Okay. Um, right, so I'm just going to test on a bit of scrap. When you're testing, it's really important that you test through two layers of fabric because you're going to always be sewing at least two layers of fabric. So always good to test that. And away we go. This is the sound of my lovely Benina. If anyone's interested, it's the Benina Activa 140. I got this when I was 16. She's still going strong. And I've just had her... Um, serviced and uh, yeah she's now sewing like a dream so you are absolutely not going to be able to see this but this is now a very fine zigzag and what's so great about that is their stretch so we stitch with a zigzag stitch because it keeps the stretch in the fabric which is really important uh, otherwise every time you move or stretch something it could it could um, um, it could snap so no good for that Right, let's do our first armhole. Always think about when you're pinning, guys, that you are, you've got your pins on the top um, so that when you've got the fabric, let's start that again. Your pins are on the side so that when you're on the machine, you've got all your fabric to the left and you've got it open here on the right. That's the best, um, whoops, best way to sew. I also haven't talked about seam allowance. The seam allowance is 1.5 um, for this pattern. So I'm lining it up there with my 5 eighths on the bottom of my machine. Anyone over in the States, we're talking about 5 eighths of an inch um, rather than 1.5 centimeters. So I'm gonna start, we're gonna do a little reverse. And then away we go. Right, as I'm sewing this guys, how's my speed? Am I going too quickly? Um, or are we, are we where I'm at? Let me know. I'm also, I need to try and sew like this, don't I? And then you can see a bit more what I'm sewing. Woohoo! Don't think it'll be the straight, straightest one. 
So you take your pins out you get, as you get to them. Uh, you know, um, the, the old stitching over a pin always backfires eventually, guys, and breaks a needle. Mm. Okay. So are we doing this on our lunch break, guys? Are that people... Oh, 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 oh. Oh, yeah, we're getting some, just some technical questions. I'll let the team asking questions. Talking about needles, ballpoint needles. Probably a good thing that I'm not answering this because I'm a bit of a... I'm sure it's fine. But the team are better so's than me and they will be like, no, Lisa, it's not fine. Understandably, so I'm going to let them answer that one. Okay, I'm at the end there. I've just done a little reverse. Okie dokie. There's the first scene, guys. We've sewn it. We've sewn a worldwide scene. We have literally got people sewing this all over the world. How exciting is that? So exciting. Um, yeah. That is an incredible positive thing to think about that would not have happened if it wasn't for this current situation. So always like to think of a silver lining. Now that's that one side. Now we're going to go on to the other side. I wish I'd marked my wrong sides with a stronger cross. Oh, it's there. Okay, so we're going for a single notch. So you'll have double on one side and a single lap on the other. And then we're going to line that up with the single notch on the front as well. Okay. And if you've got stripes, try and line those up. Oh, I didn't check whether... Kind of good at the beginning. Slightly sloppy at the end, guys. I think it's important that you all know that <laughs> um, we, we don't always do things perfectly and it doesn't matter. It's quite funny when we're so when we, we all obviously make things um, and wear them to work. And uh, I think now the team, pretty much the team at Sew Over It, who, all the team that sew, are all very good sewers and certainly are better sewers than I am. So this doesn't happen so much anymore. But when we had so as that were a little bit more novice, you'd, they'd be like, oh, you'd, they'd be wearing something. They'd be like, wow, that's so cool. And they're like, yeah, don't come close. Lisa, don't come close. You're not allowed to look at it closely. Uh, I used to be like, don't look inside. <laughs> don't look inside because I didn't have time to finish things. That's often my point. I often sew too quickly. I'm talking about sewing a Betty dress, um, which we will be next week. These ones aren't lining up. Oh, well. Oh, well. Those stripes aren't lining up. Um, yes, yeah, so uh, talking about Betty dress, which is what we do next week. Oh, it's flicking on to standby. Oh, oh there we go. Uh, I used to sew a Betty dress in two hours. I mean, definitely not my best work. Stop beeping. I've already touched you and told you that it's good to stay on. I think me and this iron are gonna fall out. It's like a space shuttle sitting there. I hope it's got a good steam function. I've yet to try it. So remembering we're following the 1.5 seam allowance, guys. I'm trying to, and that's it, I'm gonna put my hand down there so I don't block what I'm doing. I need to keep remembering that. When we film the stitch school, it's often, yeah, I've got to remember to make sure my hands don't block, block what we're doing which is actually, I should talk about the Stitch School because there are lots of videos on the Stitch School that will discuss, discuss and help you with uh, more information about knits and sewing with knits. So we've got our Intro to Knits course. We've also got our Bilberry and uh, uh, oh gosh, why is it? the Raglan T-shirt, which has escaped me what the name is. I want to say Henley. Is it the Henley top? Um, anyway, hopefully. <laughs> But yes, there are lots and lots of videos and also uh, extra videos as well. Hebden, sorry. It began with the H, I got that. It's the Hebden. The Hebden Raglan t-shirt is probably the most similar um, one that we've done on the Stitch School. So if you want to sign up for the Stitch School and get lots and lots of uh, extra help, more so than I'm gonna be able to give you today, then you can sign up and we have also wavered the minimum sign up um, as well. So you can just sign up for a month, whether it's for the five pounds or for the uh, 15 pounds. Right, okay, so we're gonna do some ironing now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna press the seams towards the sleeves. So I'm now gonna disappear, but I shall carry on waffling from the iron. 
So if everyone wants to go and iron theirs now, here we are. You can see my arms are doing it, but you can't actually see the ironing. I'll have to see if I can set it up that way, but I don't think my angle will be wide enough. So this might be the best we can do, guys. So pressing from the inside, pressing those seams towards the sleeve, towards. And once you've pressed them towards the sleeve from the wrong side, I would then flip it and press them from the right side and just check that your seam hasn't overhung, which can happen. Okay. Right. Ta-da! So let's have a look at what that looks like. Nicely pressed. Let's not judge me for the slightly disalignment. <laughs> Unalignment, not disalignment. There we go. So seams are pressed out towards the sleeve. So we're now going to take our back and we're going to do the same with that. Should have marked the wrong side. I feel like it's, hmm, I don't think there's actually a, a very obvious wrong side and right side to this. It is a really lovely um, Roma Ponte this. Um, not that I can be like, oh, you can get it from here because we used to stock it. Um, I don't know if we still, I don't think we still have any left anymore, but it's nice because it's quite fine. And I think if you were making something like the Heather dress, I don't know if it would be too light for that, but certainly for this, it's great. Okay, so back. So we've got two notches in our back here and we've got two notches in our back sleeve. So we're now just placing right sides together. Mm -hmm. That two notches don't seem to have cut in properly. Oh, well. Oh, I mustn't forget my tea. Is anyone else drinking tea, as they say? Mm. And I think I was halfway in the middle of asking you if you were uh, on your lunch breaks. Have you got your uh, out-of-office lunch break on? Uh, do not interrupt me with a conference call at home, because I am sewing. Oh, yes, I'm just going to repeat that stitch length. So um, the stitch width was uh, one point. Sorry, stitch length was 1.5 and the stitch width was one. Coffee, people having coffee. Yeah, sorry, I forget that other people don't. I just drink tea, but of course there's all sorts of other drinks. Yeah, is anyone having a glass of wine? Taking it up a notch. Let's see if anyone's really enjoying this stay at home. Oh, we've got a nurse here, hi. Oh my goodness. Oh yes, fish finger sandwich, Sarah. Sounds delicious. Jasmine and I have already had our lunch. Um, I am eating like a toddler as well as living the life of a toddler at the moment. We had egg and soldiers. We had dippy eggs. Um, but mummy is not a great cook and mummy slightly overcooked the eggs. So they weren't that dippy, but you know, we, we persevered. Jasmine was like, mummy, not working, not working. So Edward, darling, just have to tie it, dip it a bit harder. Maybe I'll just scoop it out and put it on your soldiers. Oh dear, she cannot wait till, till her grandma moves back in here and starts cooking her nicer food. So funny, my parents have been dropping off. Um, so those of you that don't know, um, Jasmine and I are in isolation here just to make sure that we haven't brought anything up from London. And so my parents moved out um, and they'll be moving back in next week. Um, and uh, yeah, so they're, they're kind of obviously we're communicating with FaceTime and things, but they're also just leaving deliveries um, on the front doorstep, deliveries from themselves, not only one exciting, but as in <laughs> they just keep dropping random things off. And then also saying, oh, we, um, oh, you're in good company while I do paperwork for the Nurses Association. That's lovely. Um, yeah, so um, they're, uh, they dropped off today wine and two bags of licorice all sorts. I literally don't think I was more excited than that moment. My parents know what I need to keep saying. Okay, so we're going to start sewing the next side. Let's remember our seam allowance. It's a 1.5, 5 eighths of an inch. Um, Okay, make sure my notches are staying lined up, just about. Lots of 
people having their lunches. <laughs> so Shona is homeschooling, so wine is on the card soon. Yes, Shona. <laughs> mm, bring, um, bring on end of school. Okay, end of school time. Right. <sighs> I tell you what, though, I, f I hope that this will make us all appreciate our teachers a lot more. My, oh, I've got a little bit of a splitting going on there, which is surprising. This might ha sometimes this might happen, guys, and it's good that it's happened now because it's. I want to explain. Oops, daisies, what to do, but. I'm surprised it's happened because it's Gutterman thread, but I sometimes you do get the thread starts to sort of separate a little bit and, and weaken. Um, so it's not actually, uh, it shouldn't have happened with that thread. It's usually a sign of not good quality thread. Um, I don't think it's the needle. If there is anything um, to, to note, guys, could the Sew Over It team um, maybe Nicole you'd know why that might happen but from as far as I was aware it's always because of um because of like yeah the quality of the thread guys we've been sewing for almost half an hour very exciting planning to sew until two o'clock I hope Unless little Jazzy wakes up. Okay. I don't know if I've done any trimming of threads. I did have some little scissors. Don't know where they've gone. So let's trim our threads. As long as we reversed and backstitched, we can um, we can trim those threads. And it's much better just to keep on top of them and do them as you go along. Otherwise, you just get end up with all these threads and you can't work out where they came from once it's all sewn together. So keeping it tidy. There we go. Right, we're now going to do the same and we are going to press it open. So not open, so we're going to press them towards the sleeve um, on the iron. Okay, so working from the wrong side first. Coco's just come along, guys. She's uh, probably excited by the lead of the iron. And knowing Coco, she'll probably try and jump up onto the table as well. Ta -da! Okie dokie doodly. This is what it should be looking like now. Ta da If I put it on like this, I don't know if that's the front. Mm. No, I think that's the back. Put it on like this. Give you context, guys, of how it's coming to shape. La la, yeah? Now looking like a top, sort of. So I believe, and I'm just gonna check that I don't race ahead and go to the wrong bit. Yeah, I, we're gonna move on to neck bands. Now this is where we are going to potentially uh, not, um, yeah, we're gonna potentially be doing different things. So what I might do is just talk through what you'd be doing if you're doing this, and then I'll be doing mine as well. Before I start that, guys, as we're first through the first section, don't forget to donate if you can donate. We'll really appreciate it. We are a small business. And even though the government is saying all these wonderful things it's going to do for us, it turns out there are lots and lots of uh, complications and it may be that we don't get any help at all. So we would appreciate any um, help that you guys can support us through this. Okay, so if you are doing this, I think actually we are, if we did it, okay, so if we're doing this version, which is one and two, and the difference between one and two is the length of these. So the shorter one, you can tie in a knot, and the longer one, you can tie in a bow. So, um, but yeah, so if you're doing this, then those versions, then we're, you'll be on step six. So you'll, you'll be joining the angled edges right sides together. So you'll have angled edges like I do, um, 
although mine are angled on both ends. So you'll have angled edges and then you'll have a kind of rounded scooped end. So you're joining the angled edges um, on both of those pieces and you'll have a shorter one and a longer one. Um, and then you're going to be pressing it uh, in half, uh, which I will also be doing, so it'll be quite similar. Um, and then you'll be stitching sections of it. So if you think of it like that, and then it goes round like that, you're going to be, so you've got, you're going to be folding it in half. So that will be a fold line along the top. Um, and then you're going to be um, ma machining round the curvy bits and leaving the middle section. So you also will be pressing the seams open. So you'll be doing quite a lot of similar things. I think it's just the kind of, yeah, finishing off how that, how that closes because you've obviously got to keep this kind of bagged out almost. Oh, version one and two are sewn in exactly the same way, but use different pattern pieces. Make sure you've got the back piece cut too. Thanks, Nicole. Nicole is on it and making things clearer because I'm probably not. So you'll have a back neck band that we're all cutting and you will, this is the version three. Okay, right. So for mine, we are going to be joining I don't think it really matters which one we join first. So we're going to be joining the angled edges together. Um, let's see if we've got the right sides. I think that's fine. Okay. Pin that together and really important here to line up those stripes. It's going to be much more obvious at this point if they're not. So... When I was cutting out, um, obviously it wouldn't have been practical to show you how I was cutting out, but when I was cutting out, what I did is when I folded the fabric, I then pinned the, um, I folded it actually like that way, so I had two fold lines, and I pinned the, um, the stripes uh, where the selvages met in the middle, I pinned them in place so that the, I kept that stripe line. It's quite hard to, um, well, it's quite easy to have the stripes that move, especially with the knit fabric. Um, and if you were folding it so you had the fold line there and then selvage there, so it was quite a big width, I would almost peel back um, and put some pins in halfway through. So you kind of, you peel it back, pin it in, then lay it over um, and then pin the rest. I don't know if that was very clear, guys. <laughs> Um, da, 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 back, back, band, piece of I don't know if I can do pin and stitch in place, repeat the other short ends. Okay, we're just going to do one. We're still using our seam allowance of 1.5, guys. So right sides together there, pinning one of those angled edges, and then we're going to sew it, and then we're going to do the same with the other side. Okay. Actually, let's go like that. So lining up with the 5 8 on my machine, make sure you're reversing anchor that thread I'm now like are we actually gonna I just suddenly realize are we gonna get too far today I wasn't expecting that I was expecting that we get to the point where our neck bands are kind of ready and then next week next week sorry tomorrow we can uh, actually uh, attach them and do our finishing of the kind of hems and things. So we'll just see though how we get on. Okay, that's one side. Um, I do believe we're pressing it from the seam allowances open, but um, da, 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 the front neck band piece pin and stitch in place. Yeah, so it is when we press this open I'm just seeing if doesn't actually, Nicole, sorry, tip for cutting the neckbone pieces. Oh no, okay. Nicole, I have a question. Um, when we're pressing this open, would you advise that we snip into that notch in the middle there a little bit more, that one, just to ease the, um, the strain when we press it open? Or do you think that's not a good idea? Nicole is our in-house expert and she puts together all the instructions and the patterns and stuff. So um, whilst it is a collaborative thing, she is the guru. Nicole. She'll be now frantically typing. <gasps> yeah, if it's not laying flat. Thanks, Nicole. Okay, so um, I'm going to press this open and annoyingly you're not going to be able to see. But if it, you're struggling to get this to lay flat, you could snip into that bit there 
um, a little bit more, but just make sure you don't go too far. So you don't want to go all the way down to the seam because then you'll get a weak point. Okay. Um, it is definitely quite awkward ironing this because of the nature of, of the angle. And so what you, what you need to be careful is that you're not um, getting any overhang. You know when the sort of seam goes inwards from the right side. You don't want that to happen. So it's worth flipping it over once you've pressed the seam open from the inside and just checking that you're getting a really nice crisp edge on the right side. Yeah, I didn't need to snip into that, that was fine. I guess as well, once you're folding it in, it's fine. Okay, so we're now gonna join this side. Now, those of you that are doing the other versions, you're gonna be like, slow down. It's probably, well, not probably, you definitely have got more sewing to do. So um, maybe what we could do is after we've done this bit, we can, um, have a little break whilst those doing the other versions are catching up. Um, right, let's do this. So it's exactly the same on the other side. 1.5. So the reason this, I should actually say whilst I'm doing this, the reason why we've got this kind of angled seam is because it pulls it in here. So if we didn't have that, that would sit up like that it wouldn't sit close. You need the seam to add the shaping to the neckband. Otherwise, yeah, it's not gonna sit. And when it comes to adding it onto the top, you'll see that you do have to stretch the neckband quite a bit. And that is often the way with neckbands on jersey tops. You make it at least 10% um, smaller so that then the neck hole itself, or the neckline rather, so that um, it kind of pulls it in um, and it doesn't sort of stand up. So it is important to do that, but it does mean it's a bit of a fiddle to get it on. Okay, okay. Oh, yeah, she's coming up. I was really hoping that she... Okay, no. <laughs> okay, if you're going to be there, you're going to completely block everybody. Oh, <laughs> instead, she's just going to... She absolutely loves looking at the needle. Oh, she... You can't see her, but she's literally there. Coco! Look, <laughs> sewing buddy, that's a bit of a distraction. No, absolutely not, Coco. I tell you guys, she's loving it up here. She's in like little cat heaven. So much to explore in the garden. She's gonna hate it when I drag her back to London. Come and say hi. Nah. Oh, so funny. Poppy's on the sofa over there and she's just heard that Coco's getting attention. And she's like, what's going on? What's going on? Sorry, Poppy, we love you too, but you can't get up on the table as well. I'm sorry, that would not be okay. Right, we're gonna press that open, guys, as well. Uh... Oh. And again, so I should have said, this is what it's looking like when I first press it. It's not quite so flat. I'm now gonna flip it and I'm gonna press it from this side. Um, and then um, I'm going to go back to the, to the wrong side again if I need to. So it's worth being really thorough with this so you get it really nice and flat. Okie dokie doodlies. <sighs> okay, so we have a neckband or oh, a really stylish headband. Let's have a look what we're doing next. Repeat the da So we now have, you now have this, yeah, using da 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 da. Are we machine tacking? We are. Hmm, thought so. Okay. I look quite 1920s. Should we also, yeah, we could do, I could do a little uh, live sew along for um, 
making things out of the scraps like heads, head scarves and stuff. Um, okay, so we're now going to place the, we're going to fold it in half like that with the wrong sides together and lining up those seams. So I'm going to put a pin into the seam there and pull it out and pop it back in like that. Okay, and then on the other side, I'm going to put the pin in here and make sure it's lined up on the other side and then back in there. So I know that those are perfectly aligned. Oh, okay. At this point, you don't need to machine tack if you don't want to. Obviously, the machine tacking does help things stay together. And I think I am going to machine tack um, because it will just, um, you know, it's just doing an extra step that makes everything easier. It depends really on the jersey that you're using. I mean, mine is quite a, it's behaving quite well, but it is also quite heavy. So I think I might, just might as well machine tack it together. We've got time, haven't we? We've got time on our hands. Someone was saying the other day that I've become more northern being up in Yorkshire. And I was like, well, I don't know why, because I haven't spoken to anyone. <laughs> I've only spoken to Jasmine, Poppy and Coco. They don't have northern accents. Maybe it's just the air. <sighs> right. Okay. Pintastic. Right, so I'm going to put this, I'm going to get out of the stitch that I was on. I'm going to go back into my straight stitch. Um, then I'm going to lengthen it all the way. There's some really good comments, guys, just coming up on the feed there about machine tacking. So do have a look. Um, okay. I'm going to make sure that the machine tack sits within the seam allowance. So longest stitch, no need to reverse with a machine tack. Longest stitch length, nice straight stitch and um um and it's bringing her so that you can see her is she there coco what's this <laughs> um and yeah make sure you're within the seam allowance so that 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 doesn't peek through although obviously you can take that out and to be honest usually with machine tacking i would leave it in because it's only on the seam allowance but with something like this which is jersey it's going to snap so you're going to want to take it out um, once you've finished your uh, piece your piece your neck attaching your neck band and um if you keep it where the sort of where you're going to be stitching the zigzag uh then that's going to be a nightmare to take out if you stitch over that with a zigzag it's going to be really difficult um Coco's here. She's just turning around to make sure she's got a front row seat. No, do not eat that. Coco. I'll tell you, it's sometimes at the stages of the day when it's just the madhouse here. I've got Coco playing with something. I've got Poppy barking. Jasmine not doing what she should be. So nice big straight stitch with a long stitch. That's just going to hold it together. So then when we put it onto the, um, the neck band, it is going to just keep itself together. Now, it might be that when we stretch it, if the, I'm finding that my long stitch on this machine stretches. So when I stretch it, it's um, to get it around this neck, um, the kind of the neckline. I'm not worried that it's going to snap, but even if it does snap, I don't think that matters. It's just an, it's just helping it keep them together because this bit is the fiddliest bit, I think, of the whole um, uh, project. Now, those of you that are doing versions one and two, I'm really sorry that I've opted for the easiest. That's not very helpful. It wasn't intentional. I want you to know that. It was purely because that's the only fabric that I had that was suitable. Um, okay. Um, I don't know if people are suggesting whether we do a zigzag stitch for machine tacking. I do not think that's a good idea because to take that out, I guess you'd leave it in. But I then think it's all going to get too bulky and thick. You don't want two stitches, um, rows of stitches in the seam allowance at that point. 
and it would also pull it in and restrict it more and taking out a small zigzag stitch would be a real pain. So that's my view on it. Okie dokie. So the back, let's make sure that we're doing this the right way. Where is our back? This is our front. Just check that is definitely the front. Yep, so that's our front neckline and that's our back. Okay, so there are actually notches um, in the middle of the shoulders there. So you can see um, that the back, the front and back are slightly different shapes. Um, okay, and so the back neck should be narrow, like not as long. So these seams should sit on the notches here. So you do need to make sure that you're going to get the front of the band aligned with the front of neckline and the back of the band with the back neckline. I sort of keep twizzling this round, but it looks like it's that way. So longer piece at the front because it's coming lower, so it is longer. Okay. Nicole's just said, if you are going to machine tack with a um, zigzag, then make sure you do a really long stitch length. Did it scare you? Coco, no. You're very sweet, darling, but you no. Right, I'm gonna start by pinning the seams onto the uh, notches there on the, um, on the top. So the notches are basically here and here, and the seam on the neckband lines up with those notches. And then you can see, if you look at that, you can see there is definitely a lot to be stretching out. We do need to stretch out. Now, there are also notches along here to help you with the lining up so you're aware of how much you've got to ease in. So I'd also line those notches up. So here I am there at the, this is the my side here, and then I'm moving along the front and I've found a notch here and I've got the corresponding notch in the neckline. So I'm going to put a pin there I do find this helpful to put the pins in um, where the notches are, just so you know where you're going. Hmm. So I think that was wrong. <laughs> Sorry guys, we're lining up the notch, just realized it was far too much. We're lining up that notch with this seam. The right, so this seam here, the seam that's, the raglan seam there. Um, just looked at that and I thought, that's way too much to ease in such a small amount. So there should still be some amount to ease here, but not, not as much as that was. And then um, I'll do the same on there. So notch with those shoulder seams. Sorry, with those raglan seams. I hope I haven't confused people with my annoying uh, confusion there. Um, and then we should also have a notch here on the back. So we're moving to the back and there should be a notch where that raglan seam is. We've got a notch uh, in the neck band and that's lining up with the seam, that raglan seam. Now, those of you that are doing the this version, you will have the same alignment here and you will have a notch here and a here in the same places, but you'll also have notches to indicate where your um, stitching and stopping for, um, this bit because if I undo this just to give you context you can see it stops you need to have that gap there so that you can tie a nice knot if you don't have that gap then you won't be able to do that no I'm not gonna be able to tie a nice knot <laughs> back in um, oh well Someone also suggested that hand basting or tacking would be a good idea for that neckband. I agree, that could also work. And let's face it, guys, we've got time to do these things now, so why not go back to the basics, the old old fashioned ways? When I was learning to tailor and dress make in Italy, um, which I did um, whilst I was doing my Erasmus year, I studied languages, and whilst I was doing that, um, I did a dressmaking tailoring course and she used to make us hand stitch everything. We used to have to do tailor's tacks around the whole seam line. We'd have to tack in a zip, we'd have to t literally, and then the buttonholes we, of shirts and things we had to hand do. So as a result, I'm a bit scarred about hand tacking. If I can machine tack, I will. Okay, 
so guys those are the points that you need to have and then then you need to ease 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 and stretch that neck band so really you are going to find that you're stretching it as much as it will be stretched it's really good english wasn't it so stretch 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 that neck band so you're stretching it into easing it into the uh neckline of the top and i when i'm doing this sort of thing i do tend to go from one side do a little bit of easing then go to the other side because if you ease just in one direction you'll find that when you get to here you may have over eased so it's better for you to ease a little bit that side and then a little bit that side um and then hopefully you'll find that you've evenly eased it in yeah so we can just do another bit of stretching there and another bit of stretching there Oof, we've got, can you see that there? We have got a little, still quite a big chunk there, but I think I can just about ease that away. See, when it's like that, it's like, but we can, uh. This is why it is really important that you are using a jersey that has a good recovery. So what recovery means is when you stretch it, it bounces straight back. Um, generally, jersey does have that based on how it's knitted, but if it's a really thin, poor quality then you'll find that you'll stretch this and then it will not it will kind of distort the fabric so you want it to be able to recover and stretch straight back um okay that's that one done and then we're gonna do this little bit here that's fine actually that didn't need much easing and then we're moving to the back so you can see the difference now let's see if i can get this so it's obvious for you guys to see you can see the difference here there's quite a bit of a difference there. So we've got to do exactly the same. We need to stretch that neckline into, so stretch that neckband. And I'm going to do two stretches from this side. And just be careful that you're not stretching this side at all. Can't be doing with that because that's going to make it impossible. This is important, I should say, though, guys. This, you, you know, some of you might think, oh, well, why haven't you put less? You know, made the neck band bigger if you do that and we have obviously tested this in twirling this just doesn't sit in it just sits up and it looks horrible so that's why we've got that and you'll find that some fabrics are easier to ease in than others okay so i've still got quite a little bit big so i'm gonna now go i'm now just going one side to the other um so that i ease it evenly um and now i'm going to come back to this side and I've done it. Woohoo! I have done it. That is good. All right. Uh, da -da. It's, gosh, it's lethal. It's lethal with pins now, guys. Lethal. Watch yourselves. So that is where we're up to. Right. I'm just going to check and think the seam allowance does stay the same. Da -da -da -da. Pin and stitch in place. Gently stretch the neckband between the notches. Yes. Okay, so I think this is going to be a nice end to it, is we're going to stitch this and then we're going to stop for today. So, let's get it on there. If you want to take the arm off your machine, by all means do. I don't think I'm going to gain anything from that. I'm going to start at one of the seams on the neckband, just because I like to always start and finish um, at a seam. Um, and also, um, you, know, you don't want to be starting for the front here um so much better to do that so seam allowance on the neckline is 1.5 centimeters or 5 eighths of an inch it's really important that you keep stretching um because even if you take your pins out oh gosh hang on a second i've not gone back to the right stitch we need to go back to zigzag if we've been machine tacking with a straight stitch so stitch length 1.5 and we're going stitch width one. Oh no that's the needle There we go. Fab. Right, so I'm really stretching this neckband. It's really important to stretch that neckband as, as you sew. So really, if you see my hands, it's going to be quite hard for you to see, but my hands here are um, pulling and stretching, pulling here 
to make sure that I'm not getting any little ripples or tucks stitched in. And then take your pins out right at the last moment. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. And there we go. It is vicious and it's hard work, and you can you probably can tell when it's hard because I don't tend to talk as much. I find that I can't do that as well. Oh, the cat and the dog are now having a fight on the floor. Wonderful. Poppy. Poppy, the cat teases her and then the dog goes too far. Anyway. Okay. So we're getting there, guys. We're getting there. Mm. Keeping, I'm really, my fingers aren't really pressing this hard down onto the base of the machine. And I can feel where there's, you know, if there's little lumps and things. You can also just keep checking. Um, and do you know what? Worst case scenario, it, it's not going to, uh, um, math, you know, if you do get a little bit, you can just unpick that section and just restitch that. Um, so if you do get a little pleat that you don't want in there. Okay. What are we getting here? What are we getting here? There we go. How are we doing for time? Oh, almost out of time, but not that, not that it's going to stop the moment it gets to an hour. Okay, so I'm coming now back to the first um, seam. I'm a bit worried that that is moving away. I'm just going to repin that little bit. So I'm basically I've done one side, um, but that has moved. Um, so underneath, I am seeing that we've got quite a bit of excess there that might not get put in. So you've just got to keep checking as you go. Um, and so you're aware of how much you've got underneath there. So it's still got quite a bit there. I'm really sorry, guys, that you can't see exactly what my fingers are doing. I'm slightly worried that if I didn't put my fingers in the right place for this, I would sew over it. <laughs> um, and I have done that before in my textile class at school. I sewed through my finger. But it made my day because the teacher said, well, Lisa, you're a real tailor now. Because only proper seamstresses and tailors sew through their fingers. So I was like, I'm a proper tailor. I've sewed through my finger. Sorry if we've got any squeamish people there. I'll stop talking about that. Oof. Okay. Oh, my brute strength going in here. This is when sewing with Roma Ponte is slightly harder because there's definitely less give um, for this section. But actually, this is a French Terry, this version here. And that was similar as well. I do remember fighting with the neckband on that one. Certainly the fabric that this is, which is a cotton jersey, you'll find it a lot easier because there's more stretch and it's lighter weight. Oh, the sunshine is absolutely beautiful. Really beautiful out there. Cannot wait to get back outside there. We are very fortunate that this horrible thing is happening at least at the start of spring. And then the gardens and outside are changing so quickly. And it's light when I get up at half five in the morning with Jasmine. It doesn't make it any easier though, guys. I've just changed my body clock. Until mum and dad move back in, I'm just changing my body clock to pretty much the same as Jasmine's. That's the easiest. Okay, guys, we're almost at, I'm almost at the end now. Da, 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 da. Can I do it? Can I do it? Have I got any pleats? We will see. Okay, when you get back to the beginning, just overlap and reverse. So if I say overlap, you want to go back over your stitching. Oh, the iron's having a tizzy again. Right. Thought I heard Jasmine then. No. Just poppy. Um, right, okay. So. Uh, 
how are we looking on this side? Yeah, we've got a tiny little one there. So I might have to unpick that bit. But apart from that, it's looking a lot better. Now it looks puckery, but it needs pressing. So we now go and we press it down. I think, oh no, with the neck band pressed up. Yeah, but the seam allowance is going down. So we're pressing those seam allowances down. So I think that's a good point to stop for today, guys, because we've got to two o'clock. Um, so if we can all get to that point, um, if you've got any little pleats, so where was that little pleat? Uh, here, can you see him? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unpick, you can see it there, unpick that little section from say here to here, and then I'm gonna stretch that out and sew it from this side and just make sure I overlap where the, the end of the stitches that I've unpicked um, start and finish and also reverse. And, and you'll just get rid of that. But you'll find that it'll look like there's more puckers, but it just needs pressing. And also once a body is in there, it will pull it out. Right guys, so that is it for today. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hopefully get a better angle, which doesn't take off the top of my uh, face. Um, uh, thank you so much for joining us. I'm so pleased this is actually, we've managed to make this work. Um, thanks to all the Soviet team for answering all those technical questions as well. Um, and thanks to everybody for joining in and commenting and letting us all know where you are. It makes it so much more exciting. Um, and yeah, we're going to keep doing this, guys. We can sew through this together. Absolutely. So tomorrow we'll be back at one o'clock, finishing this off. Um, and also um, next week we will be doing... Um, the beginner sewing and kids sewing on a Monday. So if you've got any friends that haven't sewed before, but they really want to uh, learn, then tell them to tune in on a Monday and also for children as well. And then next week we are gonna be sewing the Betty together. Yay, the Betty dress again, the same slot, Wednesday and Thursday um, on um, one o'clock for an hour each day. If you would like to leave us a donation, guys, please do so. The link is in the description box below. Thank you so much for joining us and I'll see you tomorrow. Have a nice afternoon. Bye.